Not like I'm fucking up. So... It's swelter or faint. I'm not opening the window because... The fucking insects. I'm not giving them the benefit of the fucking doubt. Unless you want to be bitten and stung. I actually learned something pretty, um, pretty shocking for the day that um, the worst thing in Australia is the killer bee. It's like that will just fucking kill you with an instinct. Uh. I don't have contacts with Don Atkins personally. Um, but he's now got an independent development company, which um, the guy's struggling. You know what I'm saying? The guy is struggling. I mean, everybody struggles. Mil- millionaires will struggle. I mean, I'd hate to be a millionaire, even though it'd be fucking awesome. I mean, look at these people win the lottery. Why is it that all these journalists are on the fucking... Ar- like, I would hate to win the lottery because you have journalists, you wrecked them. Every day, you know, whoopee doo, you've won the lottery. <laughs> um, you know, why? Um, but oh, uh, yeah. I mean, they're releasing some. If you don't mind me saying some killer shit, oh, I am gonna open this. I'm gonna get some air in. I think if something stings me, oh, hell with it. Um, I do feel sorry for John Hurd, you know, I found out that he lost his girlfriend. That's better. I'm going to have it a fraction. There we go. Yay. The poor guy lost his girlfriend. You know, that wasn't... um... That wasn't his doing. To be fair, though... (laughs) 
Crush the Genius, I've just made a metal album and you should hear it. Well, send me a link. I mean, I think don't bother with going on, on to, don't try going to labels because they're fucking by your left, right, and center. Like, everybody wants me to go on Britain's Got Talent. And the reason I say no is because it, literally they've bought you, you, you buy into a contract anyway, you buy into a contract. I said this to a friend of mine. And he was as shocked as hell. But I was like, well, you wanted to go down that commercial route, so don't worry about being played on the radio. I mean, the thing is, like, the reason why people go on Britain's Got Talent is because they want to be played on the radio. And I would say you, you, you're going to... Don't, don't bother go down that route because if you're going to get played on the radio, I mean... If you put a song out and you show it to all your mates on TikTok, you're probably going to go viral within... If your song is a killer... If your song is viral and it's ki it's a killer song, then sub the radio. And a lot of... like radio. The radio doesn't play nothing new anyway. The radio doesn't play anything new. And the new stuff that, like, when you hear stuff on Radio 1 or uh, whatever, uh, if that's where you go to hear new music, the new music you're going to hear is very narrow. You know, BBC 6 Music, well, 6 Music as it's known, is the place to go for new music. And uh, Six Music and... There's another place to go, but I can't think. But lots of people now... the. There's no one I know that's listening to the radio, per se, because it's the same bullshit. So, if you was to put a record out tomorrow, you're not, you're not going to get played on any, any station. No station will play you because uh, the big record companies want to, I don't know. I mean, I can understand that people want to go on Britain's Got Talent because they want people to hear something new and improved, but... Do you want to be creative or do you want to sell your soul? I mean, you've got to look at like a band like Merp, who were a great black metal band, and pro they won't need to do anything. Their future's already been set. But... Um... Even if Simon Cowell was to drop you tomorrow, you would still have to go to Sony. And not a lot of people know that. Um... I mean, who was the guy who 
Shane Ward. Now, the only reason he went to another label was because he pissed off Simon Cowell's management. But he did a lot more than that. He he didn't he wasn't going to sell to that company I mean he's not worried about being dropped um the only way you could do it I mean if you're signing a contract the only way you could do it is sack your manager and sack you know but it's it's a lot of money your end to do it that way. It is a lot of money. Just remember, and they will have bought your social media accounts and all the rest of it. It's just not worth going down that alley. I mean, freaking hell, if you want to be a rock person, just put it out. Just put out a good song. And, you know, if it's good, someone's going to listen to it. I mean, metal nowadays, um, all the best metal acts have really small, um, really small fan bases. And you're going to say, Stephen, why haven't they got big fan bases? They don't want big fan bases. There's a lot of bands out there that be happy to. Uh, they'd be happy to play to sort of twelve people. You know, they're not bothered how big their crowd is. In fact, and that's the way it is. You know, if you go to the shows. You know, you're showing up and you're supporting the band. I mean, 12 people is pretty small, but in actual fact, the way that it works in the metal community now is they would rather you stream their shows. There's a lot of metal bands out there, a lot of local metal bands that the 12 people go. Um, they encourage them to stream the shows for them. So they probably get more people. Like there was a black metal band that had more people watching their stuff on Twitch than they were actually at the show. And the actual people at the show, I think there was only about 15 people there. But on Twitch, they had thousands and thousands of people watching and it just goes to show I mean if you put out a, a, a song and what a hundred people buy it to or if you say two thousand people buy that record I mean it, you gotta look to any scene like even the dance music scene now In fact, the way that works is you put out a single and you just have to heavily market it. But... Another thing as well is if you don't play the loudness wars, you know, okay, record labels overmaster things because they'll sell it. They know the teens are going to buy it. The parents are going to tell them to turn the music down. They turn the music down, it's still going to be loud. 
you've got to remember that if you're putting out a record, you want it to be sounding good, not wrecking their speakers even when they turn it down. I've spoke about this in many of a video, in many of a production rant. Because I believe, as a listener, and this is why I want to um, back up some of my music collection, because the music I bought and uh, the music I check out online, I'm like, ugh, it sounds horrible. But I'm not happy with some of the shit that they put out in the um, you know. But I think the new way to get your record heard is in video games. Because I'll tell you a little I'll tell you a little story. Um The band Rage Against the Machine. I actually heard them in a video game way, way before. And I'm going to the early 2000s. You know, I played um, a mountain bike game, which they were in. It was only a demo. And I heard Papa Roach's songs and everything like that. But I heard many other things. I, hold, I heard uh, Cold Storage when I played Wipeout. Um, but I'm thinking, like, there were games out there, I can't think off the top of my head, but there were games out there that had this one artist that you'd never heard, and you'd see their name in the credits thinking, freaking hell, if they just put out one... Just imagine if they put out a, an album or something. Well, they had, they'd released it in the game, and I think now the way to go is um, to put out a to either get your music in someone else's game or create a video game and put the music in it. It doesn't have to be a great game. The music just, I mean, look at people like, um, I'm trying to think. Like, look at, um, is it Adventure Path? That's actually an artist. They do put their music onto, like, other stuff. They're like, um, the synthwave type artist. But what if you are, like, an artist and you really wanted people to hear your music? If it's in a game, I think people are going to hear it by mistake because um, they're not. I mean, like um, Grand Theft Auto, is it Grand Theft Auto 2 where um, there's an indie band from Liverpool and I found out and I found out they did, uh, hold on. Yeah, they were a band from, it was, well, it was a producer from Liverpool. And he wrote that, he wrote um, a song that was on the rock station and on the country station. And I played it to my friend and my one of my mates and one of my music tutors was like, oh, that so-and-so wrote that tune. I was like, did they? And I never, I didn't hear, I can't remember who they were now off the top of my head, but they, they do um, produce, they were producing for... Um, and they did the hip hop track for 
uh, the first GTA game, they did they didn't sing on it. The guy who sang on it was the guy who created it, but they did the drums. Um, they did another rock track for the first Grand Theft Auto. So yeah, but again, uh, I mean Grand Theft Auto is another story, but I mean. It'd be cool if you bought a game and found out a mysterious track and then wanted to hear more of that artist. But record labels, again, they don't want to go to the video game industry just yet. But I think that's where they'll make the money in the long run. I mean, some of the Chemical Brothers' biggest tracks were from video games. 